Hello friends and welcome to another example video. In this video, we are going to look at Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, how it works in a transformer and some calculation around it. So let's go. Question is from Summer 19 paper 42, if you want to do along with me. So as usual, warm up. This is such a familiar warm up by now. State Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. So you will say the induced EMF. is directly proportional to the rate. This one is roughly already one mark. And then you can say rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Lost count the number of times Miss Ellie and I have written this. Okay, magnetic flux linkage in a closed conducting loop. And I guess whenever we write this, the sentences are a bit different, but it doesn't matter. Alright, so we're done. One minute to write the definition. Okay, so this is an ideal transformer. Beautiful. You have your primary coil. Primary coil is always attached to the input primary. Okay. Secondary coil is always connected to the load. Okay, so you have input, you have output. So just to label it for you, this is V in, okay, and this is V out. You could also call this Vs. Okay, so that would be the secondary, the voltage across the secondary coil or across the resistor Vs. Just like this one can also be known as VP for primary. Okay. Explain. Ooh, explain question. Explain why there is an alternating current in the primary coil. There is a current in the load resistor. Oh, oh, oh. So they're saying that why is it when we have AC inside here, we have AC inside this uh, primary coil, means that there is current in the secondary coil. Interesting. Okay, so let's think about Faraday's law. Faraday's law says that, oh, is it again? If there is a change in flux, there will be an EMF. So the first thing we need to decide is where is the change in flux? So, of course, the alternating current means you will alternate the magnetic field. All right, so what I'll say is just the alternating current AC in our primary coil okay uh, give rise to a changing magnetic flux linkage inside the coil or basically be very specific la, to be safe inside the primary coil if not you just say coil la, they can just say is it secondary no 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 this is still primary alternating current in primary coil give rise to a changing magnetic flux inside the primary coil okay now it's time to talk about the core because the primary coil is linked to the secondary coil by the soft iron core okay so I will then say that the changing magnetic flux or from here, because we already write down the full term, you can just say changing flux or changing magnetic flux in the core, okay, is link, 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 L-I-N-K-E-D, link to the secondary coil okay and what happens because it's linked when there's a changing flux in the primary coil means that there's a changing flux in the secondary coil so I'll say hence the secondary coil also experiences a change in magnetic flux 
So from Faraday, an EMF is then induced inside the secondary coil. Okay, we need to go back to the question. Why is there a current in the load resistor? Okay, causing current to flow in the resistor. Okay, good enough. So where are the main concerns? The main points that you should write about is there's an alternating current in the primary coil. So alternating current in primary coil will give us a changing magnetic flux linkage. Okay? The word changing magnetic flux is important. And the second point, so the blue one is the first point, alternating current, primary coil, will cause a changing magnetic flux. Second one, the core links to the secondary coil. Okay? So one mark here, one mark here. Okay, and the third one, you will say that because the flux in the secondary coil is changing, so EMF is induced inside secondary coil, current is also induced inside secondary coil, and hence inside the resistor. All right, the last mark needs to connect back to the question, which is a little bit harder to get. So this is the explanation. Make sure you be as detailed as you can without writing an entire essay, okay? Cover the main points. Where is the change in flux? How is the primary coil and the secondary coil linked together? So secondary coil also got changed because of the linking. Secondary coil will have induced EMF, will have current. All right, so that is that. I'm going to move on to the calculation part. Primary coil in B have 2,700 turns. So this is NP, uh, number of turns in P. I'm just going to highlight this. Okay. Secondary coil has 450 turns. So this one will be uh, my NS. Hmm. EMF applied across the primary coil is given by this expression. So this one is the EMF or we will call this the V in. No? V in. Or I guess we could call it VP, primary coil. E is measured in volts and T in seconds. Okay, very good. Calculate the root mean square RMS EMF induced in the secondary coil. So what I want now is VS, but not just any VS, the root mean square. Okay, so one by one, I guess we can decipher this equation first because this one is the peak voltage inside the primary peak voltage, the primary voltage in the primary coil. So here you will have VP is equal to 220 sine 100 pi T. All right, so by comparison, this 220 will be V0 for peak voltage. Okay. Can you find the RMS? Ah? Can. We find the RMS first, lah, since they asked us to find the RMS for the secondary coil. So hence, I would then say VRMS. If you scared to use all the symbols, you can just say VRMS for primary coil will be equal to 220 over root 2. Okay, so I could say VRMS for P, something like this also can, or bracket P. Okay, so 220 over root 2, this will give me 155.56. So I guess I will write more SF first because this is not the end of my calculation yet. So 155.56 volt. Hiya. Okay, now we are ready to use the ratio of number of turns because in the equation, it says that the ratio of the number of turns for the primary to the secondary is equal to the ratio of the potential difference or the voltage of the primary to the secondary. 
Okay, and all of this we will use RMS. RMS. Hmm, this one is a nicer way to write it. Okay, let me change this. Don't have any fixed convention now. So this is V primary, but RMS value. And this one here, this beautiful 220 will be V primary, but peak maximum. Okay, so we can substitute now. The primary coil consists of uh, 2,700. The secondary coil is 450. Let me draw a vertical line here to separate them. Okay, the primary RMS is 155.56. You want to be more accurate, you put the whole thing inside law 220 over root 2. We are looking for VS, secondary coils RMS. So we have the numbers now. We can plug it in and press our good friend the calculator. Uh, 155.56 times 450 divided by 2700. So this uh, secondary coil RMS will be equal to 25.93 uh, for me. So it's 25.9 volt. And if you want to, you can write 26. Lah. Okay, 2 to 3 SF. Alright, so where are the three marks? One mark is when you find any RMS value because you need to convert. So either this one, you stick to peak, you find the peak secondary voltage and then you convert to RMS. Okay? Or you convert to RMS first before you use the ratio of the coil. Okay? Then you multiply and then you get this one. Alright, so using the turn of the coils correctly is one mark. Uh, finding some RMS value is one mark and then final one is one mark. You can find RMS then use turn in, ratio of turns. You can reach, use ratio of turns using 220, find the peak for secondary and then only divide by root 2 also can. A then B also can, B then A also can. Alright, just make sure you show your working clearly. Alright, that's it. If you're wondering then means why they give me the 100 pi uh? Just give you lah. See whether you are confused. Okay? So in this question, you don't really need to know. But what you need to know is the peak, which is the number or the coefficient in front of the sign. Alright? So what did we learn in this example? Besides defining Faraday's law, we have used Faraday's law once again to link the primary and the secondary coil. You can see through the example list, there are so many questions I'd like to ask you to explain something about the transformer. Okay, so now your transformer, you are asked to explain why is there current in the load resistor, which is very commonly asked. And also pretty straightforward to answer. Just say that alternating current in this primary coil will cause a change in flux because the soft iron core link them together. The flux inside here will also change, causing the load resistor to experience current. Okay, and finally, we did the calculation, uh, which I just explained what it is about. As you can see, my computer is lagging. So that's all for this example. If you find these videos helpful, do watch a few more. Good luck with your A2 studies. Like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.